Just tell God, God, thank you so much this morning. God, like you've seen my notes. When you were talking about water breaking. When water breaks. Concerning a pregnant woman. A wonderful change is about to happen in her life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this morning, I will be talking about the theme, Turning Point. Turning Point. For I believe very strongly that somebody is about to experience a turning point. Yeah. So shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. Psalm 30 verse 11 says, you turn my wedding into dancing. You remove my sackcloth and close me with joy. Every sackcloth in your life, the Lord will remove it Amen. and close you with joy. Amen. Your wedding shall turn into dancing Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So what is a turning point? A turning point can be defined as a point at which a significant change occurs. Usually a change for the better. Just like the example of the breaking water that we have is a change for the better in the life of any woman. And this change for the better can happen in all situations of our lives, you will experience a turning point today. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I say things will turn around for you Amen. and it shall be for the best. Amen. People of God, in Genesis 12, the very first verse, for example, when the, that day came, when God called Abraham to leave his family, to leave his people, to leave his country, and go to that place where he would show him, it was a turning point in the life of Abraham. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. That was a great turning point in the life of Abraham. If that day had not come, we probably wouldn't have heard of the name of anybody called Abraham. His name would not have changed from Abraham to Abraham. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody will have a new name today. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the book of Exodus chapter 3, when God called Moses out of the burning bush to go to Egypt, obviously this was a turning point. Not only for Moses, but for the children of Israel, who for over 400 years have been subjected to servitude in a foreign land. Not only were they slaves, they were subjected to cruel bondage. In Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 to 8, the year that King Uzziah died, that was a great turning point in the ministry of prophet Isaiah. That year, Isaiah saw God like he had never seen before. Can you put it on the screen for us? Let us see, please. Or somebody can read it. Isaiah 6. Start from verse 1. Yes. Uh huh. And the strain of the temple. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Each one had six wings with twine. He covered his face and with twine he covered his feet. Uh huh. Yes. And one cried unto another. Uh huh. Yes. The whole heart is full of his glory. Yes. And the first of the two lived 
Yes. 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 Uh huh. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That was an experience, the first time experience in Isaiah's ministry. I believe today somebody will experience it on your You will begin to see God in a new way. Amen. You will begin to see God like you have never seen before. Amen. In the name of Jesus yeah. Christ. There are certain things that happen, children of God, when a person experiences a turning point from God. the person's morning unto dancing. God will turn your morning to dancing. He will turn your willing to dancing. Morning in this sense is not restricted to people who are crying or mourning because they have just lost a loved one. Even when no one close to you has died, someone can still be mourning. Someone can be sad in deep pain and heavily weighed down. A classic example of somebody in this kind of situation is our biblical Hannah. First Samuel chapter 1 verses 6 to 8. First Samuel chapter 1 verses 6 to 8. Hannah had been waiting for a child for a very long time. For so many years, she got to a point where she was always crying about the situation. Understand, she has not lost anyone. But she wasn't happy. The situation affected her appetite. It affected her physical appearance. Publicly and secretly, people were mocking her. Just like Anna, there are people who have been mocking you. There are people who have been saying, where is your God? There are people who are saying, no, 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 nothing good can come out of your life. But that God who answered Hannah, today, he will turn things around for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I say today is a turning point for you. Say it's a turning point for me. God will turn your money to dancing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Your pain will turn to relief. Amen. Your agony will turn to comfort. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. How did God turn Hannah's morning to dance? He had her prayer. God will hear your prayer. Amen. Hannah was in pain. She was hurting and she was discouraged. Things were not going well for her. But as discouraged as she was, he didn't stop her from praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A lot of Christians, quote and unquote, I was so discouraged, I couldn't even find time to pray. What are you a child of God for? If you can't even pray, what can you do then? If you are so down, you cannot pray then how do you get the antidote to that discouragement? God will strengthen you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I say God will strengthen you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God knows that we will face situations that can bring about discouragement. And that is why he says in James chapter 5 verse 13, Is any one of you in trouble? He should do what? He should pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In other words, is anyone amongst us in trouble and discouraged? All we need to do is to pray. For that is how we will be delivered from that trouble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. 
Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. You will sing psalms. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will sing psalms. Anna did not receive a turnaround by a dry casual prayer. No. Her morning was not turned into dancing by casually breathing in and breathing out of the presence of God. Her morning, people of God, let's understand. It was not turned around just by coming to church on Sunday to fulfill all righteousness. This woman experienced a major turning point in her life because she prayed, she called on God, she cried to God, she focused on God like never before, and God answered her prayer. God turned her money to dance. People of God, Today is not business as usual for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not going to be like those times that you just casually mention the name of God and that's it. It's not going to be a day that you just stroll in just like you want and that's it. Today you are in the presence of God. You will make your presence felt in the presence of God. Lift your voice up unto the Lord. Father, I am here today. Recognize me. Recognize my presence. Father, recognize my presence. I have not just come. I have not just come to add, to make up the numbers. But I have come, oh Lord, because I know that it is only you that can turn my morning onto dancing. You are the only one that can turn things around for me. Renew me on all sides. Call on him. Pray like you have never done before. And ask him to smash the heads of all those that have been that have been affecting or afflicting your life. Lift your voice up unto the Lord. I have come to you because I know whom you are. Let there be deliverance concerning every area of my life. From the hands of the enemies that said they have trapped me. Let there be deliverance. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. God will remember you. Amen. You will wipe away your tears. Amen. God gave Hannah something great. He gave her the very best. God will give you his very best. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The interesting thing about this woman's story is that one would have thought that after waiting for so many years for a child and not having one, her prayer would be, Lord, give me a child. I'm okay with any child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So far that I have a child, I will be happy. Our sister just spoke to us earlier this morning about the kind of children we have here. Your children shall know God. Amen. Your children shall be of God. Amen. I say your children shall be of God. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Vagabond spirit will never locate our children. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. is a true example of someone who understood her covenant rights with God. She understood like our Lord Jesus Christ told this Rephishan woman the bread is for the children of God. The very best is for the children of God. The crumbs anyway, let's look at Matthew chapter I uh, know Mark chapter 7 Mark 7 from verse 24 so we'll understand the story very well. And the crumbs are for those that are outside the covenant of God. Mark 7. 
Yes. And from there he arose and went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon and entered into a house and would have no man know it, but it could not be he. Go on. We are stopping at 30. Woman, yes. Whose young daughter had an unclean spirit. Aha. Uh -huh. Heard of him and came and fell at his feet. Yes. The woman was a Greek. Yes. A, a Sarophine, a senior. Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. And she besought him that he would cast for the devil out of her daughter. Yes. But Jesus said unto her. He said to her. Then the children tried to kill. Yes. For it is not meant to save the children. Those that are within the covenant of the Almighty God, let them get the best first. Yes. Uh -huh. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, yes, Lord. Uh -huh. Yet the dog, the dog under the table eats of the children's crumbs. Uh -huh. The crumbs is just enough. I may be a dog, but I don't care. I don't, I don't mind what I have. The crumbs is good enough for me. But the crumbs are not good enough for you, children of God. Because you are under the covenant of the Almighty God. Go on, man. Yes, because you have even said, yes, you are outside the covenant, but because of what you have even said, I see something special in you. Yes, go on. The devil is gone out of that daughter. Yes. And when she was come to her house, yes. she found the devil gone out. Yes. And her daughter laid upon the In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Every incursion of the devil in your life. Every incursion of the devil in your family. Amen. Every incursion of the devil in your career. Amen. Every incursion of the devil in your business. Well, get out in the name of Jesus Christ. Where there has been any trace of the power of evil in your life before you came into this sanctuary today, by the time you leave, you will see it no more. Because when that woman left her house, the devil was still relaxing in the life of her daughter. The devil see was, maybe he was still sleeping. He was still having morning snap. But by the time she, she went back home, the commander-in-chief had commanded the devil to get out, and he had no choice. In the name of the commander-in-chief, in the name of the almighty God, I say every area of your life, where the devil has brought delay, deniers. Where the devil has brought torment and torture. Where the devil has brought failure. I command them. Oh yeah, get out in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a turning point. Say it's a turning point. It's a turning point. Today is a turning point for me. Hallelujah. They've been flexing their muscles. They say they cannot be defeated. Today you will bury them. Amen. I said today I will bury them. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So when Hannah prayed in 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 11 despite her situation she boldly and confidently asked God for a son. She told God she wanted a son but not just any kind of son. So when you pray children of God we must be very very specific. You must understand that when you pray, God answers. Don't have any doubt. I know that the Lord will, he will break the heads of all my enemies. Amen. I have no shadow of doubt. God will give you his best. Amen. Hannah asked, said, I want the best that you can give me. The one that will be dedicated and sold out to you, Lord. I want a true servant of God. And God answered her prayer. God blessed her with a prophet. Hallelujah. 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 Uh, the devil has robbed so many people of the knowledge and understanding of our covenant rights. That's why many of us ask for crumbs. When we lift up our voices unto the Lord. Crumbs may belong to some people. It does not belong to us as children of God. We must ask for the very best. And today, I want to encourage you. Because the word that God is sending to us, he says it's a turning point for us. 
Don't ask for crumbs. Ask for the very best. And God will grant us. Amen. Say, God will grant me. God will grant me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone will get the very best from God. Amen. I have no shadow of that. Secondly, God repairs situations or people that can be classified as a write-off. It's the second way that a person can experience a turnaround. You know, there are some accidents that will happen. Car accidents. The insurance, this is a write-off. They can't even repair it anymore. There is nothing that can be done about it. It's, it's gone. The best that we can do is to crush it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because of the damage done to the car, they cannot do much. This man in Mark chapter 5 that we read earlier, verses 1 to 5, is a typical example of someone you can describe as a write-off. This man was not the regular kind of madman. This man was raving mad. His case was so pathetic, he lived in the cemetery. You can imagine somebody living comfortably among dead bodies. I can't find the grammar uh, to use for that kind of a person. The interesting thing about this man's story, which is where I'm going, is that no one could solve his problem. No one could control him. No one could handle him. Sometimes, there are situations in our lives, children of God, that we call on friends, relatives, they can help us out. But there are some challenges in our lives that no human being is able to do. They cannot help us because it is beyond man. For people like that man, in Mark chapter 5, verses 1 to 5, who are in a situation that many human beings have written you of. Situations that no doctor is able to solve. Situations that no pastor is able to handle. I say to you, God has come to visit you today. Amen. That man, that woman, that is hearing me this morning, I say it is you that God has come to visit. Amen. No matter how bad it looks, no matter how unsolvable it appears to be, no matter how unresolvable it appears to be, I have come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm saying to you, by the time you depart from here, everything will be resolved in your favor. Everything will be resolved in your favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the end of this day, you will look around. You will walk majestically as if nothing of that sort has ever happened to you before. So shall it be in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will do something in somebody's life. Yeah. That all the praise, all the glory, all the adoration will go unto God and God alone. Can somebody read Isaiah 42 for me please? Isaiah 42 verse 8. He is the Lord, child of God. Listen, yes? That is my name. That is his name. And my glory will I not give to anyone. He will not give his glory to any other person. Neither my praise to grave his image. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the Lord. That is his name. What human being cannot do for you, he is the Lord. That is his name. He will never give his glory to any other person. Nobody will take the glory of God away from your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I am saying to you, child of God, for each and every one of us, today is a turning point. Amen. Say it's a turning point for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Son, you experience a turning point when God turns every evil plan against 
you and me around. Every evil plan against our life, the God will turn them around. In the name of Jesus Christ. There was a plot, evil plot against the children of Israel. In Esther chapter 7, verses 3 and 4, somebody read it for us. Esther 7. Let's be quick, let's be quick. Esther 7, verses 3 and 4. Esther answered and said, Yes. If I found favor in your sight, O king, and if it pleases the king, yes. let my life be given me as my petition, uh -huh. and my people as my request. Yes. For we have been sold, uh -huh. and my people and I uh -huh. have been destroyed, yes. and to be killed, uh -huh. and to be eliminated. That's the plan of the enemy concerning you and me. Yes. Had we been sold as men and female slaves, I would have held my tongue. Yes. Never compensate for the king's loss. Hallelujah. We have been sold. We have been betrayed. We have been harassed. We have been intimidated. We have been inundated with so much fear in, in our lives that we just feel what is left for me. There's hope for you. Say there's hope for me. There's hope for me. Uh, I said, there is hope for you. There is hope for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes, like what happened to the Jews then, the devil and his agents, they have dug a pit for you and me. They try to frustrate us and bring us down. But thank God, That the God that we serve is able to turn things around, that those who have dug the pit will voluntarily enter into that pit. Amen. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. whatever evil plans the enemies have set up concerning you, they will be caught in their trap. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, they will be caught in their trap. Amen. There are people whose situation is like Joseph. Joseph was thrown into the pit. I don't know what that pit looks like in your life. It could be in terms of your health. It could be physical. It could be spiritual. A pit is a pit. But look at what Joseph said. In Genesis chapter 50, verses 19 to 20. After Satan had done his worst, Joseph said, You intended to harm me, but God has turned it to good. God will turn it to good. Amen. I said, God will turn it to good. Amen. Everything Satan has done thus far to harm you, God will turn it around for your good. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The reason why God will do this is because if he doesn't, his name will be at stake. God's name will be at stake. And God does not joke with any of his names. He can never allow his name to go to the mud. He can never allow his name to be spoken of lightly. God can never allow his name to be ridiculed. God will not cross his legs and let people to say concerning a, a true child of God, a person who puts his trust in God, that, oh, God couldn't save him. God couldn't save her. No, God will not, he will not sit down and, and see or hear that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's look at Isaiah 36. That is 18 to 20. Isaiah 36. Verses 18 to 20. Beware. Lest Hezekiah persuade you. I am washed in the blood. Yes. When Satan comes and wants to, 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 to harass you with those things, who does not have a past? 
what we are talking about today. If Christ comes today, I am going to heaven. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Amen. yes, some years back it may be different. It may have been totally different. But he spared my life because of the love that he has for me. And I'm not taking that for granted. So when he wants to, to bring all those past memories, tell him to shut his mouth. I am new in Christ. I belong to him. I'm sold out to him. So there is no way that you can torment me using whatever happened in the past. I agree my past wasn't good. But my today is a lot better than my yesterday. And my tomorrow will be even better. Hallelujah. God will renew you. God will renew you. I repeat, God will renew you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lastly, children of God, God turns his own children from the error of his ways. Proverbs 14, verse 12. It says, there is a way that seems right to a man, but at the end is destruction. There are things that we have done. There are choices that we have made that on the surface, they look like they are okay and good for us. But at the end of the day, they bring nothing but pain and regrets. Remember the parable of the prodigal son. In Luke chapter 15, verses 11 to 18, the young man thought he was doing the right thing. He thought he had made a wise choice. When he asked his father for his own share of his inheritance. On the surface, things looked that they were going on well for him. He had come into good money. He traveled and went to places. He was enjoying himself. Living life big. Doing it the way he thought was best to do things. But what happened to him later? Abject poverty of the worst kind came upon his life. To the extent that he was depending on the food meant for peace, for his sustenance. That shall never be your portion. In the name of Jesus Christ. But this was someone who appeared to have started off well with a lot of money. All this happened to him because he was not with his father. He was not close to his father. He had cut himself off, shut himself off totally from his father. Thank God. The prodigal son realized that when you are not with your father or when you are not where your father wants you to be things may appear to be going on well in various areas of our lives but it's just a facade how about you children of God are you with the father how close are you? As you are seated, I want you to lift your voice up unto the Lord and say, Father, I just desire to be so close to you. I desire to hold on fast to you. I ask of you, Father, come near me. Draw me near unto you. I desire to be very close. Father, draw me near. Draw me near, O Lord. Even as you are here in this assembly today, 
Pass me not, O oh Lord. I want to have a very close relationship with you, Lord. I want to have a real relationship with you, Father. Grant me that unction. Help me to return back to you. So that I will not fall into any error. So that I will not cut myself off from that glorious inheritance in Christ Jesus. Pray, children of God. Pray. I know I cannot do anything by myself. That is why I have come, O Lord. That is why I have come to you. Save me, Father. Save me, Lord. As I come to you, protect me. Guide me. Defend me. The roaring lions all over the earth, let them not consume me. Father, don't take salvation away from me. Father, save me. in jesus mighty name we have prayed Amen. in psalm 27 verse 4 david said one thing i have desired of the lord one thing i will seek after is to dwell in the house of the lord all the days of my life lift your voice up unto the lord and say father i just want to dwell in your house i want to dwell with you all the days of my life father let nothing separate me from you let nothing separate you from me
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. We will rise up, please. Just wanted to go before the Lord and commit this week into the hand of the Lord.